A true teacher doesn't do anything to keep people around. The most important sign is in the heart. Here is how you can tell a good intention from ego. When you do it for yourself, it is an element of ego. When you do it for others, being ready to sacrifice yourself, that's an intention. Throughout their lifetime, children acquire a huge amount of external beliefs. A woman's fulfillment is all about love and acceptance, and a husband's heart will soften. If there is love, he cannot resist. No one can resist this power. How do you know it's true love? How do you know it's karmic? If your heart skips a beat while your mind is off, if it just happens, it means that yes, this is an old acquaintance for yours that you may have not seen for ages, but the time has come for you to meet. Such things can happen. When people say, I don't know how it happened, it just happened, this is exactly what I'm talking about. But I'll say once more that it doesn't mean people need to marry as a result. You might have met to complete old programs. You may feel that you have a lot in common, you like the same music, your eating habits are similar, you even chew on the same side of the mouth and all that. Everything suggests that this is the one you need. All right, fine. But a year later you split up. What happened? I don't know, he's become like this, he's become like that. The problem is that at this point people don't realize that they don't need to marry, they just had to meet. Yes, they had a lot in common, they are similar in a lot of ways, they have lived this, they have been together in the past. They may have been a brother and a sister, two sisters, mother, daughter, son, doesn't matter. But now they are in another situation, they have met to give each other what they didn't give in the past. Then, suddenly, as Antarova says, the triviality of the everyday takes over, and people split up for no explicable reason. Because one likes apples, and the other one likes pears. That's all. It happens. They break up. Why do they feel it's okay to do that? What happened to their feelings in relationship? Men are more accountable because they have certain duties. In this respect, a woman is less accountable, because this is the man who assumes the responsibility for the woman. What does it take a woman to become self-fulfilled? A woman's fulfillment is all about love and acceptance, and then the husband's heart will soften. No matter how much of a tyrant he is, if there is love you cannot resist. No one can resist this power. So you don't have to do anything about it. You can practice if you want, but do something, observe your thoughts, as you say. That's right, yes. This is to ensure that you don't lose your feeling of love. Because when a person enters into the mental plane, they forget the most important thing. However, even if you are oblivious for a while, this feeling still comes back to you, because there is compassion and love. That's not an attachment by any means. It's not a state of, what will I do without him if he falls out of love? Or, I don't behave very well, what if he leaves me or finds someone else, for example? This doesn't work here. A person who loves leaves all these things out. Even if this is the case, this person just loves and everything else doesn't matter to them. Then you enjoy it. It's not the relationship between a male and a female that you enjoy. You enjoy this state of radiating love. And in that state, you don't care whether they love you or not. This is the difference. The same goes for men. When do people need to marry and when don't they? Is learning foreign languages beneficial? Answering your first question of whether people need to marry or no, and how to tell if they do. Imagine that you have come to me and say, for example, I have met a man and I want to marry him. I've made up my mind, I'm determined, I say, look, it's not really necessary. And you go, no, it's necessary. You won't listen to me, and it means that it's necessary. You see? When I don't sound persuasive to you anymore because you were determined about it. But after many years, you will realize that I was right. (laughs) 
However, other questions will arise then, like, how do I make sure that everything goes well? I'm just kidding, of course. As for languages, learning languages is very beneficial. It supports the development of neurons, of the brain. If you have an opportunity, learn languages. This is very good. But when you practice spirituality, you begin to realize that in their essence, all languages are one. Words may sound distorted, but fundamentally, there are a lot of identical words in many languages. There is no problem about learning languages while you remember your native language and talk mostly in your native language. If you start to think in English, for example, it won't create any problems either, because your mind just switches. We are talking about switching one's mind. You can switch back to your native language at any time, and spiritual practice will maintain your DNA and everything related to it. When people who don't practice spirituality move to another country and forget their mother tongue, they begin to change. And this is the other extreme, because people mustn't forget their native tongue. Maybe you have seen historical or other movies about people who go to a foreign land. They bring along a handful of earth or ask someone to bring it to them. Then they say, we live here, but we are like this, and this is our culture. They try to preserve their culture, it's crucial for them. This aspect is linked to their psychic and bioenergetic processes with their DNA. So what matters here is to preserve their traditions and culture, because words impact our DNA, and if we use slang words all the time, I have talked about it today, if we lose what we were initially given from on high, this essence that affects our structure, we will morph very fast. You may have heard about the Slavic Universal Script. I knew the keeper of the ancient tradition of this Universal Script, Shubin Abramov, who left this world already. He was a very interesting old man. He knew what the Russian language really was. I'm not trying to place the Russian language above all other languages, saying that you are Russians and so on. In fact, I am not 100% Russian. However, the Russes included all the peoples of the Caucasus, Asian peoples. They are also Russes, even though their languages differ to some extent. However, there is that Russian language, the universal script, from which everything emerged. Sanskrit and Old Russian are in close kinship. Ukrainian is in close kinship with Sanskrit. Lithuanian is in close kinship with Sanskrit. No one will say that Lithuanians are Russians, right? They won't accept it because they were educated this way. However, their language is in close kinship with Sanskrit, and Russian is close to Sanskrit too. They have the same roots. If we take a deeper look into this matter, we'll find many things in common. Moreover, Arabic is very close to Russian, strange as it may seem. Pushkin talked openly about it. And the old English language, Shakespeare's language, is very close to Russian. Contemporary English differs from it significantly. This is also slang. Once, a Japanese came to Sai Baba and said, You are the Avatar. They came to test him. You are the Avatar. You speak Hindi, Sanskrit. If you are the Avatar, you must know all languages, mustn't you? He looked at them, there was a whole delegation of them, and said in old Japanese, You, Japanese, forgot your true language a long time ago. The language that you call Japanese is far from it. Then, of course, they understood everything. He spoke in old Japanese. Then, of course, they understood everything. There was a funny incident. A Russian group is taking part in an interview. Sai Baba asks a person, How are you doing? What do you want? He responds, Baba, I want liberation. I want enlightenment. Okay, good. How is your wife? She's fine, Baba. Are you happy? Yes, I'm happy. 
What do you want? Well, I don't really know. Baba gives him a materialized ring. There are a lot of people there. Then he turns to another person and asks, What do you want? You're sat there looking so sullen. The guy replies, I want you to say something in Russian. Baba asks, Ask for anything you want, use the opportunity. While we are here at the interview, you can ask for something. The guy goes on, I want you to say something in Russian. Baba says, okay, and turns to other people. Then he approaches that guy again and asks, well, ask for anything you want. The guy answers, I want you to say something in Russian. He's fixated on this idea. Sometime later the interview comes to an end. There are a lot of people. Everyone is sitting, and this guy is sitting there, frowning, looking. And Baba says in Russian, clear the way. Gets up and goes. How does location impact spiritual practice? It may be linked to the emotional aspect. You go from one pole to the other, come to new places, alter your mentality. All this gives you an opportunity to gain experience and relax. Wherever you are, first of all, the work is carried out within you. And second, God is everywhere. It doesn't matter. However, I agree that at the initial stage it's a good idea to take all this into account. For example, certain masters, among them Lahiri Mahasaya and Yogananda, advised people to practice eastwards or northwards or northeastwards. That says a lot. It's good to practice northeastwards, staying in an upright position for the power lines to run through you harmoniously. But if you practice southwards, for example, another form of energy activates. There your intellect starts to suffer. Some mechanisms are turned on, others are turned off. This is why there are special pranayamas in Raja Yoga with different modes, where you turn to each side of the world in order to nourish your structures. But the best power source is your medulla oblongata. If not, then it is better to travel to holy places. How do childhood traumas affect people as adults? They greatly impact one's life. But we have the 42 healing kriyas that help realize these negative patterns programmed before birth or at the moment of birth, birth traumas, postnatal problems. Throughout our lifetime, children, both boys and girls, acquire a huge amount of external beliefs, from fears to certain forms of humiliation. That also generates fears and suppresses personality. All this greatly impacts our life and our belief system, building up and turning on certain archetypes, developing the intellect in a certain way. And it is very challenging for a person to eliminate these programs. If, for instance, a woman abuses her child, he becomes a maniac who wants to take revenge on all women to give the most primitive possible example. However, there are very sophisticated schemes, and it would take us long to analyze them. Another scenario. Say a girl sings la-la-la or screams at home. Here her mother rushes in. She's in low spirits. She rushes in and says, shut up, will you? And the girl shuts up for the rest of her life. She may begin to stutter or develop autism. She becomes an autistic child, because for her, her mother is God. And here she comes down on the girl, telling her to shut up. What's the right way to set an intention? Are intentions and desires of the ego different things? What's going on with the quantum field? As you express an intention, the quantum field is ready to realize this intention. Especially if it is a spiritual intention. If it's an intention that you express in the name of an unselfish, universal goal, goodness for all people, it is ready to fulfill it immediately. But the selfish aspect that expresses the intention, that is, the personality aspect, is not ready to accept this powerful force. For this force to manifest itself, a person must give up their selfish desire. Then you can express the intention as follows. 
Since I know that I am not ready to accept such powerful forces, please let this whole team, myself included, take over the whole load that we have to hand over and will accomplish it all together. I'm not referring to you personally, I'm talking in general, but as the ego always wants to take all credit, and there isn't enough credit for everyone, the quantum field or the divine mind itself says, My child, I am ready, but you are not. I am afraid to burn you. All it takes is a little impulse for a person to puff and turn to the booty, because this power is enormous. Then he waits for you to develop high conductivity. And he says, Okay, Khadija, show her the 42 Kriyas. If you are ready to accept this power, it's possible to fulfill it through you. Here is how we can tell a good intention from ego. When you do it for yourself, it is an element of ego. When you do it for others, being ready to sacrifice yourself, that's an intention. It's a simple form. Let's say you want to attain realization. What for? Everyone says, we want to achieve liberation. What for? What will you do with it? Are you ready? Ask yourself, is it a selfish goal or is it something you really want? Do you want it because you've heard about it, that it's great, that it's cool? I already told you a story about a friend of mine, maybe during a satsang. By the way, I was with him during Babaji's initiation. He didn't see Babaji, unfortunately or fortunately, I don't know. It was like a curtain over his eyes. He was sitting still and couldn't move until everything ended. He was sitting there as if he were frozen and didn't see anything as if he were behind a curtain. He asked for liberation and nearly died, because for him liberation was about becoming very cool. He thought he would be a sort of Spider-Man or Batman, that he would save the rest of the world and so on, that he would free the planet from reptiles and whatnot, that he would be this cool guy. He asked for liberation but almost died, because liberation implies leaving this plane. There is nothing to do here, others will do this job. But his mind cherished a different idea, an erroneous one. Later, thank God, we got him out of it. We held pujas. I also participated on the mental and spiritual plane, and so on. He is alive and well now. Speaking about Sai Baba's advice, expressing an intention requires a huge power that is sourced from the causal plane. In other words, intentions work at a causal level. For an intention related to your Self-Realization, Baba's advice is as follows. Express an intention of having the power or obtaining the grace to calm your mind. When the mind is calm, opportunities open up. How do you identify a true teacher or master? First of all, a true teacher doesn't do anything to keep people around. This is the first indication. The second key indication is that this person can outwardly play this life, but has little need of anything. You just need to see the person and by observing them, understand it. The most important sign is in the heart, you just feel it. They may be even acting strangely. Sometimes teachers, especially masters, behave inappropriately on purpose, in order to test one's inner strength. If a person is led by the mind as a rule, such a person will stay there for some time. Then they will find a shortcoming in the master that is in fact their own shortcoming. The master is like a mirror. Such a person will blame the master and leave, except when it really is a pseudo-teacher. And they can really behave like that but it will be immediately noticeable. Craving for money, craving for power, condescending, a big ego, lack of humility, for example, or pretending to be modest. For example, I am pretending to be modest, but I'm not really modest. Can you discern this? It's important to be able to see the difference between these things. It's important to feel it. But there's a specific indicator. This person can enter the state at any moment. They can talk to you while remaining in the state, and you will be aware of it. 
They will be in a state of altered consciousness. It proves that they are detached and don't want anything from you. At the same time, they spread compassion, unselfish love that is not sensual, care. These truths are simple, but the person must possess all of it. Then there can be purely technical aspects. One's breathing stops, and they can stay still for a long time, for a certain time period. Or they can enter a state in which their physiology changes, to some extent. Such people can have certain powers. Magnetism. Spiritual magnetism.